First things first, you guys know, just like with anything that we're going to do in, in cooking, but especially things like this that involve heating up sugar to almost 300 degrees, we need to have everything set up ahead of time and be really careful, right? So um, as we go through this, we experimented a little bit when we did fudge last semester. Some of you guys recall, some, some of those turned out really nice, some of them didn't turn out so well. And that just lets you know that understanding sugar and candy is kind of its whole other, its whole own, um, you know, side sidestep of cooking, okay? You can do pulled sugar, you can make them into ribbons, and I'll show you even playing with some of this today, how we can kind of mess around with it. And uh, once you understand the temperatures, you get really creative and can make some pretty amazing things out of sugar, okay? Um, we are heating up sugar, like I mentioned, to a pretty hot temperature today, okay? There are a lot of different stages of candy making, and that would be the first thing you'd want to know probably before getting involved with this. So your job to kind of flip this lesson a little bit is to get online tonight on my blog, or even just go to YouTube on your own, but I found a couple good videos that I put on my blog about candy making and just the processes and the steps, okay? There are probably five to six stages of candy making, right? And the one we're going to today is the very hard, the, the top stage. We're cooking that candy until, we're cooking the sugar until it almost caramelizes and becomes burnt, which we don't want. We're going to the hard crack stage. So we're making stuff like Jolly Ranchers today. Some of you guys came in and saw a plate up here and it looks like there's glass on it. That's actually candy. That's what we're making today, okay? And so not only are we dealing with some really hot um, sugar, but also just be careful um, when you're eating the candy because it's kind of like, kind of like cracked glass, so just be careful with that, okay? Uh, before we kind of get into it, let's just talk a little bit about um, some of the things that I have up here and what you would need ahead of time, right? We use candy thermometers. These things are great, you guys. I've had this in this classroom since before I started teaching here. So, that being said, I would really want to make sure before I invest a bunch of money and in, in time into making this candy that this, this thing is measuring accurately, right? How would I do that? What would be the best way to maybe determine if the thermometer is measuring correctly? Take a second to think about it. There are probably a few different ways you could do it. Any ideas? Instead of just putting sugar in here, if I just put water in here and brought it to a boil, right? What, what should I expect to see here, guys? What temperature? Come on, this is basic memorization, right? For science, what temperature does water boil at? You can even say in Celsius, guys. Come on. It's 212 in Fahrenheit, okay, right? 100 degrees Celsius. As long as your thing is boiling, once your water starts boiling, it's at 212, then you're right on. All right, wake up, guys. I'm giving you some candy today, okay? Now, that's great, but luckily nowadays, and it just gets even more and more amazing, you guys, with things that are available to you, we have our little temp gun, right, that we use for when we were making um, fried items in class, but this thing's worked, worked great. And what I did last period is I had them both in there. I wanted to make sure that they were kind of both working, and it turned out that this thing is really darn accurate. So um, it's a kind of a helpful thing instead of fumbling and messing with this, especially when these get all fogged up, you're kind of trying to read them. And again, when we're dealing with going only a couple degrees in a different direction, you really want to make sure you're kind of on top of it, okay? Um, candies that we would make out of the sugar at the earlier stages would be things like Tootsie Rolls, taffy, things that are soft, right? And it makes more sense because there's still more water in those. What we're doing today is cooking our sugar in our liquid, our mixture here until it's 99% sugar. Only 1% water should be, um, should be left in there. And so that's why it's gonna be, again, a hard type of a candy, okay? A couple things you need ahead of time. Um, some candy molds, which by the way, the candy flavors and the candy molds, you can get on Amazon or support a local business and right behind Play It Against Sports, there's a nice kind of cake and candy shop right there. Pop right in, lady, super nice. And these are maybe a dollar or two each. I have some cool, like, jewel-looking ones. The ones you guys are going to use are these little lips. Um, you know, again, we usually do this on Valentine's Day, but it works out here. Um, for lollipops, if you wanted to just do pour out the candy, you would, again, use something like this. We've tried parchment before, and it sometimes will stick to it. So these are great. If you haven't gotten one of these silicone baking mats, uh, for your house, they're maybe 10 bucks each. I would, I would grab one there. You know, you got to take care of them. But I just bought a bunch for you guys, so you'll each have one in your kitchen. It makes life a little bit easier for those things. Okay. So we have these lollipop molds, and they're ready to go. One thing that it does say, and it sounds a little weird, is the first thing is to prepare our molds by spraying them with non-stick cooking spray. So you're thinking candy, why do you want to have oil in it? Well, we clearly don't want it to stick there. So I'm just going to spritz them real quick with just vegetable oil. This isn't anything too crazy, not like olive oil or anything too intensely flavored, just basic vegetable oil. And so that's gonna make it so they come out. At this point then, it's all about cooking your sugar. So we have water, a little bit of sugar, and then corn syrup. 
You guys recall a few weeks ago, we talked about all the different types of corn and things that are involved in lots of different recipes that we have. Corn syrup here helps that process of dissolving the sugar immediately, right? And it makes it so it doesn't crystallize again, which would be a bad thing. If you ever ever tried to make rock candy, which is great, you're actually trying to get your sugar to crystallize onto something, right? Um, but uh, we don't want that to happen in this case, okay? Okay, a couple other quick things too. Now, before we just jump into starting to heat up our sugar, let's talk about some tools. Which one should we use today? Which one should we not use? They each have something you can say about them for when we're making candy. What do you guys think? So we're dealing with things that are very hot in temperature. So which one can I eliminate? Plastic. Plastic? Yeah, probably plastic or a spatula. I just heard that one off the bat. Um, nowadays, you can get spatulas that are pretty heat resistant, right? They can go up to even 400, 500 degrees. But these ones, clearly this is like from the 70s. Uh, if you stir this, you're going to come out and your thing is going to be gone. It's going to dissolve in your candy. And that's not good for your digestion or anything. Okay, so avoid using the rubber spatula once you get it cooking. Okay, for sure. So now we're left with a couple here. Which ones do we want to get rid of? Metal. I heard metal. Rock on. Which one? Why do you want to get rid of the metal? Um, not necessarily explode, but we do have to do with the heat. What do you guys think about that? Oh, it, it uh, uh, I can't, it's like spreads through. through. Transfers, yeah. you know, we're thinking of that, I know, you, we had a little mind melt there. So yeah, it transfers heat um, a lot quicker, right? So if I'm standing here stirring this, it's very dangerous, you guys, because this is going to be in 300 degree sugar, and it's going to transfer up to my hand very quickly. And again, we're all about safety. Safety is first, then we can, can, we can eat and enjoy our food. So a wooden spoon is going to work out great for us. As you read the recipe, it tells you you're not only you're not going to stir this after it starts to boil. So you really don't even need this after it starts to boil. But we want to be really protective of ourselves in that way. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and crank this on to about medium. It starts with a quarter cup of water. Don't use your light. Sounds good to me. Quarter cup of water. And again, to get this party started, to start the dissolving of the sugar, we're going to go ahead and add in half of a cup of this. So I'm going to go up to the three quarters of a cup, right? Because I already have a quarter cup of water in here. That's the extent of my math skills. Go ahead and pour this in here. Again, you can use your spatula now, all that stuff. Nothing's too hot, right? Once we get involving that, that sugar boiling, we really want to keep it to that wooden spoon if you need to. Okay, leave that there. And make sure that we're actually heating up. Yep, looks good. And then a cup of sugar. Okay. And it seems like it, but actually it really doesn't even make that much candy. So it's pretty amazing when you think of all the different types of things that you guys eat that have sugar in them and how much sugar goes into it. So I'm going to let this sit here. Clearly it will dissolve a little better as it heats up, so I'll let it just kind of heat up. A lot of people will put their thermometers in and start checking it out immediately and kind of keep it to it. You know, again, it's not going to get up to 300 degrees very quickly, so you know, don't be so concerned about reading your thermometer until, uh, until you're really starting to boil. Again, we're getting water out of it, so you'll want to see that steam come off. As that steam comes off, the temperature increases, the percentage of sugar increases, and again, you get to these different stages of candy making. Okay. Um, Different types of flavorings. As I mentioned, you can buy the molds and the flavorings over at that store or Amazon.com. Um, a lot of flavorings like vanilla extract, you guys, have alcohol in them. And it's not really the type of alcohol you want to drink. It's just to kind of, to kind of dissolve that flavor and make it more pronounced. So like when we make cookies, we use vanilla extract, and those are kind of alcohol-based. When you're making candies, though, you're using something that's usually oil-based. Like this one is cinnamon oil. This is a spicy kind of cinnamon oil, so you can do all kinds of different stuff like that. Um, some flavors work better than others. You guys are welcome to try some. If there's a few little pieces left over from last period, I did strawberry. And it really smelled like strawberry as we were cooking, for sure. But a lot of times what that means is that the flavor kind of goes out of the candy and it might go into the air. So um, you just have to do some experiments and find out kind of which candy flavoring you like the best, which one works the best. And again, I think if you go on Google, you could probably... Um, find out what other people have been doing with that, okay? You want to work quickly, you guys, once this reaches your temperature. Okay, again, we have everything ready because as we take this off the heat, it's going to harden up as quickly as possible, right? And especially this because it's we've worked out a lot of water. So you'll notice that I'll scoop it into these molds real quick, and I'll pour it uh, right on top of our silt pad here. And you can even pick it up and spread it around. 
as it cools down, that's when people um, start actually molding it. And you pick up, use gloves that are more heat resistant than this, but you could start pulling your candy. Maybe you guys ever been to the boardwalk and seen them doing taffy or those kind of things, or even just watched on a, on a food show, you might've seen stuff like that. So um, now that it's almost at a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and do a cup, like a final stir here. And then I'm just gonna leave this out, like my recipe tells me. Remember when you're clipping these on here, guys, you wanna really make sure that it's actually in there, it's getting to the right spot. Periodically, you'll see me kind of tilt this so that more of the liquid goes around this thermometer just to have a more accurate uh, temperature, okay? But even right now, we're only at 2, 214, so we're a little past boiling, right? Because we're actually boiling sugar, so that's a little bit past where we're at. Clean up is easy. How would you clean up? Something like this. Even though I'm going to pour this and there's going to be hard candy now stuck on the inside of this pot. But I'm telling you, it's super easy to clean. What do you guys think? What would be the best way to clean it? Any ideas? What dissolves sugar? Water. Oh, hot water, right? So if you put this back on the boil, put some water in it, and you put a lid on it, it's going to go ahead and dissolve that. Now, we don't always have those luxuries in our class because we have uh, 55 minutes to deal with, so, um, but you can always let it just sit in water and it'll dissolve, or you put it over hot water, kind of stir it up, and it'll dissolve fairly easily. I find it's interesting, this will like to go to about 220, it's 222 right now, it'll kind of sit at 230 degrees for a while, and then it'll shoot up fairly quickly after that. So it's just one of those things that you kind of mess with. I know you guys are probably not able to see as, as well up there. Just quickly, a couple different types of molds, you guys. One of these is good for candy and one is not. Okay, I already showed you this one. So whenever you're buying a candy mold, if it's clear, it's for chocolate only. Because chocolate, we never crank up to this high of a temperature, okay? So these, if you've tried to pour this candy in them, this nice face of the, of the owl will kind of dissolve into something, okay? So this is for chocolate only. I've got little, got little mustache ones that are cool, and again, you can find all kinds of all kinds of different things like this online or at little candy shops. Stirring it in. Okay. Got some cinnamon oil. And just okay, so I added my color. I added my cinnamon oil. If you're using the cinnamon oil, don't stand right over it, it'll burn your eyes a little bit. Okay? So notice how you smell it? it smells like Smells like, uh, smells like those atomic bomb candies or whatever. A bomb candies. Little lip ones here. Gotta move real quickly because it likes to solidify pretty sure. How do you move At this point, it's cooling down very quickly. Look what look what happens. If I if I can if I walked into a cooler like a walk-in right now and did this, it would start making sugar strings everywhere. You can make a nest of sugar, you know, to serve with your ice cream and blah blah blah. You know, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. But the creativity should be endless with these kind of things. It's just about understanding the science at first. Once you understand that science behind it, pretty soon it won't have any flow at all. Um, in about three minutes. I can lift the edges of it because it won't be that hot to the touch. You'll notice a lot of people that are messing with candy are going to have better gloves on than I have because they'll actually touch this candy here soon. And at this stage, this is when you would start pulling it. Taffy becomes opaque because it's got oxygen in it. It's just got air trapped in it. So um, that's the whole issue there. But pretty soon in about three minutes, if I wanted to put like, a, like this bottle here and curl it over it, it would harden up and maintain that shape when it was done. Okay. Mango cheesecake.
That can be. Oh. It's touchable. All right, good. You got there. You guys got some yellow ones. What flavor did you guys do? <laughs> peach over there. Good. We got the peach colors. Good. Got some jewels there. You guys did strawberry. Uh, or? Cran raspberry. Cran raspberry. All right. Very nice. Let's see back here. Unclean in the pot. Boiled water. Very smart. Thank you. 